it's always great to be around people who know how to build things, and our guest right now knows how to build things in a very big way. Elizabeth Hausler from Build Change. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you. So when I said build things in a big way, you build special things, don't you? Homes. I guess you could call them special. Absolutely. Yep. But, but you build homes in an area where other people don't build them. Is that right? Right. We help people rebuild houses in areas that have been devastated by earthquakes, particularly in developing countries. So we have had operations in Indonesia, China, and Haiti. Now, I understand that your, your projects, your work in, in China is finished. That's right. And uh, tell us about uh, what, what you did, what you found, and how you made it successful. Ah, great questions. So we worked in the area that was affected by the 2008 Wenchuan, Sichuan earthquake. Mm -hmm. And we had a very successful partnership with, a, with the Chinese government in which we were working in a rural area uh, and the Chinese government really didn't have enough engineering capacity to support the, the very uh, widespread reconstruction that was going on. So we hired Chinese engineers and architects, trained them in how to design and build an earthquake-resistant house using locally available, available materials. Mm -hmm. They went out and met with each homeowner, sat down with the homeowner and said, okay, what does your plot look like? What's your budget? How would you like to lay out your house? Where would you like your kitchen? Where would you like your toilet? Um, and drew a house that the homeowner would really like. And by engaging the homeowner in this process of selecting the architecture, we were able to also empower the homeowner to understand how to build the building safely so that it can resist the next earthquake. Then when construction was going on, we trained builders on the job during construction and also empowered the homeowners to be able to check the construction themselves so they could supervise and make sure that their home was being built according to basic standards for earthquake safety. Well, when I hear that, you know, the basic standards for earthquake safety, what I hear is, wow, that's got to be expensive. And you're talking about building in countries that they don't have a lot of money. That's right, but it depends on where you start. So if you're starting from a point where you just need to connect certain parts of the building together better, which is really a common thing that, that goes wrong in earthquakes. Certain parts of the buildings are connected together, and when the earthquake happens, they separate. And so if you're just starting from there where you need to make a better connection, um, it's really not that much more expensive. Mm. So we have programs in which the cost is maybe five to twenty percent higher uh, to make the building more earthquake resistant. What are some of the special challenges that you have when you go in to build an, an earthquake safe home in in China and is it the same in China as it would be in any anywhere else? The the technical challenges are very similar. Uh, in most of the places where Build Change works, we're working with people who are building with confined masonry construction. So this is a, a, a load-bearing masonry wall system, uh, which uh, is confined by reinforced concrete columns and beams. So it's like a big rubber band around the masonry wall. So you need to have a strong wall. And a lot of times we're finding that the builders aren't uh, building the wall in a way that's very, uh, very strong, and they're not connected those reinforced concrete elements together very well. So there are very basic, simple things that can be done to improve the way these, these buildings are built. Mm -hmm. So the technical challenge is actually the most easy challenge, the easiest challenge to overcome. We know why these buildings collapse and we know how to build them better. Mm -hmm. It's the financial challenge that's, it, that's a bit more difficult because, like you said before, we are working in areas where people don't have enough resources, in some cases, to rebuild safely. So we need to make sure that people are using their resources as wisely as possible, investing in the right part of the building to make it more safe. Why take your expertise to uh, countries that don't have a, a whole lot of money? Why not just stay here in the United States where there is a, an abundance of money in some areas and say, we'll build here, we'll make a lot of money, we'll all be happy? Well, because 99% of earthquake fatalities these days happen in developing countries. And I just think that everyone has a right to a safe home. So, and really, when you look at it, if you look at the earthquakes that have happened over the last 10, 20 years, it's not the earthquake itself that kills people. It's the collapse of a poorly designed and built building. So this is a man-made problem. There's got to be a man-made solution. And the man-made solution really is locally appropriate technologies, small changes, and financial incentives to get people to rebuild safely. How many homes were built in China using this, or do you even know? 
Uh, we, we actually don't really know. We worked with about 1,300 families, but oh the resources that we developed were used in other programs, and that we're not really sure. <laughs> yeah. And so now you're working in Indonesia and in Haiti? That's right, yep. Wow, two island countries. Mm -hmm. Very, very challenging, I suspect. The, they are, both countries are challenging, but for the same reasons. We've got to make sure the technology is right and, and create access to financial incentives so that people rebuild safely. So in Haiti, we have a program uh, with two partners, Cordaid and JPHRO, in which our partners are providing the funding to rebuild the house. But the homeowner can only get the funding if they follow the standards for earthquake safety. So we're providing some bonus, some financial incentive, but with strings attached. So you have to follow the building guideline in order to get the funding. Now, I mean, I've been to Haiti. Yeah. Um, it is a very challenged country, and the people are very challenged because they have hardly any money at all. I, I didn't even know that there were homes that were that needed to be rebuilt. Let's just put it that way. Uh, and instead, everything should be rebuilt there. Well, actually, we've been working on. Uh, We've got about 800 housing units that are completed this month and another 700 that will be completed in the next month or so. So this is about 1,500 housing units, which is a huge impact um, on the reconstruction of Haiti, and there's a lot more that we can do there. The majority of those housing units have been retrofits, so strengthening of a damaged building so that it can withstand the next earthquake. Um, there's a lot of building stock that can be retrofitted in Haiti, and this is a lower cost solution than rebuilding new, which is something that a country like Haiti really needs where there is a limit to financial resources. But even though this has been done uh, with a grant from our partner agencies, we found that so many of these homeowners have invested their own money in further improving these homes, into adding extra space, into making the buildings even more earthquake resistant. So this approach of really empowering the homeowner to make the decisions talking them through the process, asking them what they want to do, what they want to see in their home. It unleashes both a satisfaction from a homeowner as well as their financial capital that they invest into the process. Help us through the process, um, especially in Haiti, that you would approach a homeowner, tell mm -hmm. them about the program, tell yeah. them how it works. What would their response be initially and then as things grew? The response has been extremely positive at the very beginning because there is grant there is grant funding as well as technical assistance inv involved and we usually start with a homeowner training so this is a half day a couple of hours where we explain to people this is why your building collapsed and here's what you need to do to build it better. And this is simple stuff. We're demystifying earthquake engineering and making it accessible to everyone. And we find this really empowers people. We get a lot of people who say, wow, I had no idea. I could have actually built my house differently and prevented it from collapsing. Mm -hmm. So the first step is always empowerment with knowledge. And then we get into the details of, okay, here, how do you really want your house and how are we going to do it? Mm -hmm. Uh, what are some of the materials that are uh, appropriate in Haiti that they have there locally? Haiti uses confined masonry. So again, this load-bearing masonry wall confined by reinforced concrete columns and beams. The wall is made of concrete blocks. The concrete blocks in Haiti can be very poor quality. So we have another program in which we're working with those manufacturers of concrete blocks to improve the way those blocks are made. And at the same time, really the bottom line is that if we're going to improve these blocks, they're going to cost more money. So we're also helping these block manufacturers with marketing so that they can get the word out about the importance of uh, buying better blocks to the consumers so we can change the market and create a, an environment in which better blocks are produced as well as purchased. So, But the reality is that concrete blocks are going to continue to be used in Haiti. So it's easier for us to improve though that building material because it's so common mm -hmm. rather than to bring in something completely new which might not be sustainable or support might not uh, be supported by the local supply chain and local demand and that sort of thing so we also find that before the earthquake people in Haiti uh, built their roof out of reinforced concrete it was very it's very heavy uh, people in Haiti are very aware of the hurricane hazard there much mm -hmm. less so than they were aware of the earthquake hazard before the earthquake some people are, are still still want to do that so we've designed stronger reinforced concrete roofs but other homeowners 
would prefer a lightweight roof. So we've designed lightweight roofs out of timber and corrugated galvanized iron sheeting, but then we face the hurricane problem. Will, yeah. these, will these roofs blow off in a hurricane? So mm -hmm. we've uh, overcome that challenge by tying those roofs down to the wall system so that we both have a, have a building that's both earthquake resistant and hurricane resistant as well. Have, uh, has build change been approached by uh, those um, developing countries that are in the ring of fire or in, in other areas with that earthquake? Um, there's a, a strong earthquake potential and said, you know, come help us before something bad happens. Uh, that's a great question. We have another, we have a, a program in Indonesia as well, uh, mm -hmm. where we've been in Indonesia since shortly after the, the Indian Ocean tsunami of 2004. Um, and our expansion plans for 2013 uh, include expanding probably to a, another country um, in Latin America that is seismically active but hasn't had an earthquake yet. So we've been working in the wake of disasters. We'd love to get to the point where we can prevent these disasters from happening in the first place using the same kind of technical assistance and financial incentive models. You know, I've heard of people chasing tornadoes, but you chase earthquakes. In some ways, yes, we do, because there's such a huge opportunity to create change. You know, if once someone sees their house collapse, they really want to build their next house in a way that's going to protect their family. And so there's an opportunity there um, to convince people how to build safely. And there's an opportunity to, to build local capacity. Uh, build Change hires all local professionals, local engineers, uh, local architects, local uh, construction professionals who we train and then they deliver our programs. Um, and there's an opportunity to to work with local institutions as well. In Haiti, we've got a partnership with the Ministry of Public Works mm -hmm. to provide them with technical assistance in developing building standards and training courses that will benefit the entire country. So we're not just looking at how can we help people re rebuild houses quickly after a disaster, but how can we change the construction practice so that people continue to build safe houses, both in the wake of the disaster and in the future. Elizabeth Houser, thank you very much. You're welcome. My pleasure.